Over time, the burners inside a gas barbecue grill can corrode, rust out, and possibly shoot out large flames while cooking. And in this video, I'll show you step by step how to replace the two burners in a gas barbecue grill to get it running like new again. The barbecue grill I'm repairing is a Charbroil Commercial Series 4 burner grill commonly found at Lowe's and Home Depot. But even if you have a different brand, the repair should be similar to what I'm doing today thanks to the new parts I'll be using. First, remove the grill grates. And it helps to have some newspaper or cardboard laid out for a place to set these greasy grates when taking them out. Next, remove the flame shields. And here I can show you the rusted out burner tubes. They're actually in really bad shape. Now I'll carefully take out the carryover tubes which are also in very poor condition. These tubes help spread gas to nearby burners for easier ignition. I'm going to clean and save these because I may or may not use them later. To remove the actual burner, I need to slide out the cotter pins on the ends of each tube. And I'll set them all aside because I'll need them again later. There's a lot of grease caked on the ends of the burner, so I'm going to use a screwdriver to help pry the tubes off their mounts. Taking a closer look at the burner, I can see how bad they really are and why the flames were shooting so high in parts of the grill. The large openings were letting too much gas through and causing flare-ups from dripping grease. To completely remove this burner, take a flathead screwdriver and pry off the igniter. Then I'll do a quick inspection of the igniter to see if replacement is needed. Mine actually looks pretty good. Now I'll remove the other tubes by taking out the cotter pins and prying off the igniters. Once that's done, I'm ready to install the new replacement burners. Sometimes the old burners will just crumble because they're so brittle, but you don't have to worry about that at this point. While I'm in here, you can see that this grill also needs a really good cleaning, and during this repair is the perfect time to do that. For replacements, I bought four Masterforge Universal tube burners. What makes these universal is the ability to extend the tube from 12 inches to 17.5 inches, making it really handy for different size grills. The kit comes with a bag of hardware, but for the installation on my grill, I only need one of the screws from the package. I'm going to lay out one of my old burners so I can measure how much I need to extend the replacement tube. To make the installation easier, I'll take a marker and draw a line on the tube so I'll know where I need to lock the extension length. Now I'm going to do a quick fit of the burner into my grill just to be sure of the length. I see that it fits perfectly so now I'll need to lock the tube at that length with the smallest screw included in the repair kit. This is also a good time to adjust the size of the Venturi tube opening. I set mine to about halfway open to start with. Now I'm going to attach the igniter to the burner itself. Please note that the Masterforge replacement burner doesn't have a groove for the igniter clip to snap into like on the old tube. But the good thing is that the clip has enough tension to hold onto the smooth metal surface with no problem. With the igniter attached, I'll place the new replacement burner into my grill and test it out. Okay, so I've tried this several times, but the burner isn't lighting. I definitely know the gas is on, but it still won't light. That's when I decided to compare the old burner to the new burner. And here, I noticed that these holes on the bottom of the Masterforge replacement burners are on the wrong end of the tube. For my grill, these holes should be near the open end of the tube. So I had to drill my own holes on the bottom of the burner tubes. I didn't have to use any special bits to drill into the metal, just any regular drill bit will work. But these holes are necessary for the gas to spread through the igniter so the burner can light. I 
I just drilled three holes on the underside of the burner, and these lined up with the last burner hole on the end of the tube. I tried to drill these holes as evenly as possible, but if they're not perfect, it'll be okay. Now when I reinstall the new burner, it should light easily with the built-in electric igniter. So now that I know the burner is working, I can install the rest of the replacement burners into my grill. The final step is to reinstall the cotter pins to hold the new burner tubes in place. Once that's done, turn on the burners as usual and check the flames. They should have a nice blue color to them. You can adjust your flame by changing the size of the opening in the Venturi tube. Again, the goal is to have blue flames all the way across. I ended up not reusing the crossover tubes after I finished. They're not really necessary, but now I'll have to use the igniter on each burner I turn on. With the flames looking like this and the burner tubes replaced, my grill is practically like new again. This is an easy repair anyone can do and the parts are readily available either online as listed in my description or at your local big box hardware stores. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all my home DIY projects.